Hello, hello. Today we are going to talk about an decoding pattern, merge intervals. So after this video, you will be quite proficient to identify any problem that is related with merge interval and you can easily do that. So on the left side here, I have mentioned our flow. So the flow will be like, first we will look what is merge interval, then we will identify the problem, then we will look for the code template. And on the right side, I have mentioned few questions. These questions are from lead code. I have mentioned their uh, their ID and their description. You can go there. You can you can just try to solve them by yourself. But in the next coming videos, I'm going to solve them by myself using the same coding template using the merge interval. Now let's go to the first point without wasting any time. All right. So before understanding merge interval, we will better understand what is meant by interval. So in general, in normally what we think about interval is like a break or pause between an activity. But here this interval is used most broadly. Let's suppose if I'm saying there is a meeting from uh, 10 to 10.30. So this time duration is also uh, an interval. This interval can be used for ranges. Let's suppose if I'm saying 2 to 10. So all numbers lying between 2 to 10 is called interval. So it, it is also meant for ranges of number. It can also use for the points between like in a coordinate plane that could be also used for that. Okay, so often standing what is meant by interval. Now in any question, let's suppose someone gave you a list of intervals, like an example this. Now any two num any two intervals can relate with each other in six different ways. All right, so here I have mentioned how six different ways can be represented as pretty simple. So here this blue is our second interval. That one is our black is our first interval. So the first case when we can see that the second interval starts after the end of first interval. This is how two intervals can relate with each other. The second case. When the second interval starts in between the start and end of first interval, but it ends after that. So this is actually the start, that is end, that is start, and this is an end. In the third case, what I'm saying that when the first interval is so big that it completely overlaps second interval, this is the third way they can relate with each other. The fourth one, when second interval starts before, the start of first interval but second interval ends in between start and end of first interval and the fifth point where second interval is completely overlapping first interval in the sixth case second interval ends before the start of first interval so these are the six ways we can relate two intervals with each other now if we observe there are three different areas like here, if I'm going to represent two intervals like that, so you can see this part is overlapping. So we have this part which is called overlapping part. Now second point you can see, let's suppose we have two intervals. They are overlapping, but this area is not overlapping with each other. So non overlapping area. In the third case, when we have first interval and second interval is apart from that, so this area is a gap, it's a free area. And there are three terms we can find out, there are three things, like if I will say terms, relations between two intervals. The first one, when they are overlapping, this area is called intersection or when we have two intervals and either they're overlapping or they are one after the other. In that case, this whole range is called union. In that case, we have this as a union. And in the third term, what I'm going to say is like simply the gap, that the same thing which we discussed about when they are they have some gap in between them. All right, so what is merge interval then? First, you have a list of intervals and the problem is dealing with overlapping intervals and the specific goal of the problem to identify either intersection or union. 
or the gap between them. For such problem, we can use merge interval. Now, there is one interesting point. Let's suppose uh, if the list of interval, which is given uh, as an input, so list of intervals, either it can, it, it can be sorted, it should be sorted. So if, if it is sorted already, that can for sure use by merge interval. And in case if it is unsorted, so there is one option, either you have to sort them and use merge interval. In that case, the complexity go for big of n log of n, or you can use some other coding pattern, or you can use some other data structure. So you can use other coding pattern or some data structure to solve those problems. We will see when we will come across those problems. But the, there, there comes some difference that when we have list of intervals as an input and it is not sorted with the start time or end time or which is unsorted at all. And let's go with the next point where we will better see that which problem belongs to merge interval and which doesn't even they look like. So how we will identify the problem. So before going that we have to see that how merge interval is actually like working. So what it does, it look first towards sorted intervals and then it is going to iterate like we are going to for loop or iterate or for left what type of language we are using. So it iterate on those intervals and using some particle condition it is taking decision that do we have to overlap, do we have to intersect, union, or here we get the gap or something. So that will be the whole simple template. This is how it is working. It looks for the sorted uh, interval, then it iterate and look for the condition. That's the whole simple template. Now, here on the left side, I have mentioned that which problem that should belong to merge interval. And on the right side, I have mentioned that these are the point which even uh, if they are, they will be there, we are not going to solve them using merge interval. So the first thing we have to know that these intervals, these points, I think we have already discussed that, that it should be a list of intervals, which is given. It could be list or array. Then you, it should ring the bell that you can use merge interval. Second, this problem is dealing with overlapping intervals. And finally, you have to find either their, that, like their intersection, their union, or gap between them. And that whole that whole thing, that the whole this process can be an ultimate goal, final goal, or that could be an intermediate step. But actually you have to find something else, like true or false something. That so if these two points in any question, so that question for sure belong to merge interval. And these two points, what it says. Let's suppose order of interval in the result is not significant, is not important. So in that case, we are not going to use merge interval. We can use some other coding pattern. Let's suppose if order is not important, in that case, we can use some hash set or we can use some greedy algorithm or a two pointer or something to solve those problems. And in the second point, which is like an optional, why I'm saying optional? Because sometimes it is possible, sometimes it, it makes the comp question more complicated. Let's suppose if the input list, input list of intervals, if it is sorted, then in that case, we can simply use merge interval. That will give us the complexity of big of n because there we just have to deal with these two points. We have to iterate and look for the condition. If this list of intervals is unsorted. In that case, there is most possible the chance we can use some data structure or we can use some other coding pattern to achieve the complexity of big of n. Otherwise, we can simply go back from unsorted to sorted using big of n log of n and then we can simply use merge interval. So these are the two points where we can find these, if these two points will be there, we will say, all right, we can try merge interval to solve these questions. And if there are these two points, in that case, either we can use merge interval 
with big n log of n complexity after sorting, or we can consider using some data structure or some other coding pattern. Now let's go to the third point where we'll finally complete merge interval with the code template. So we are in the last step to find the coding template. But let me summarize again that this merge interval is normally used in our day-to-day -day daily life. So let's suppose if you are you are working in your office and you have to schedule a meeting with your friend. So what you will normally see that let's suppose this is from 8 to, till let's suppose 5 p.m. and you have your meetings already there. And now you want to schedule a meeting with your friend. So let's suppose in this gap. So you try to find this gap and it shows you a pop up. It says, oh, buddy, in that time, your friend is busy. So this one is actually using the merge interval. It is looking at scheduled meeting of your friend calendar. And then it's coming to say that your friend is busy in this time. You can try other time slots. So in that case, you move your meeting here and you say, all oh, right, your friend is available. You're also available. So these are also the application of merge interval rather in a lot of other places. And now what is a coding template? So the first thing, interval should be sorted. The second step, what we will do, we will iterate on these intervals, either using for loop or for left or recursion. And later, what we will do, we will look for the condition, if condition, if that condition, which is either looking for intersection or union or gap, if this condition satisfies, we have to do whatever is expected and in the else part, we are using some other logic. So this is the whole coding template. I'm not writing the code here because I'm making this free from any language. So in simple, you can use any of your language, you can sort the intervals, or if they are already sorted, you can go with that. I have already mentioned if they are not sorted, you can sort them, but you have to go with the n log of n complexity. And you can try with other coding like other data structure or coding pattern to solve them within big of n complexity. So it, in merge interval, these interval must has to be sorted. And then you have to iterate all of them using for loop or for left or recursion, whatever language. And then you have to look for some if condition where this intersection, like you, you're what you're looking at, this interval, which I am currently dealing with, this is our current interval and the next interval is here. So if they overlap, so what you're going to do, you are going to merge them and creating another new interval. So this is how you are going to deal with your, your condition mostly. Like you have one interval and second interval, you find that these two are overlapping and you are merging them into a new interval and you are moving forward with each next interval to deal with so that's it we will meet in next questions like when we are going to solve them using the coding template and all of them will be the same exactly like that see you in next video have a good day cheers